Right now, we're going to address the problem you get with a lot of photographs, but they're just over contrasty, flat, just kind of dead. There's no life in them. I'm going to show you how to make them sing inside of Lightroom Classic or Adobe Camera Raw inside of Photoshop. <laughs> Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and today we're going to be working inside of Lightroom. Now if you're using Photoshop, don't worry, you can still follow along because the settings and the adjustments inside of the Camera Raw plugin inside of Photoshop are identical to the ones inside of Lightroom. So all you need to do is if you're in Photoshop 2020 or CC, all you need to do is just select that layer and choose Filter, Open in Camera Raw. Otherwise, if you're on an earlier version of Photoshop, just go from Bridge and then just right click, open in Camera Raw, and then the adjustments are going to be exactly the same no matter what version you're on. Okay, so here's a photograph that you've probably got plenty of these in your collection, I know I have, where it's just a very, very bright day, over contrasty scene, very hard to, you know, take a good photograph because the sky is very light and of course creates a lot of harsh shadow. So we can actually fix this. So let's have a look and see how we're going to do that right now. What we're going to do is choose the develop module. When we're in the develop module, we can make these adjustments. Now, here's a tip for you working inside the develop module. All of these can be just kind of dragged left or right. So I recommend you're going to drag this out as much as you can because it elongates these sliders and it just gives you that much more control and that more, much more precision. Okay, so the first thing we need to do here is just bring back detail. So we're going to skip the sliders and we're going to focus here on the tone. We're going to go down under highlights and shadows. So let's pull the highlights all the way back and notice we're starting to get a little bit there in the sky. We're starting to see a little bit of color. Now let's pull the shadows all the way up and notice we're bringing out a lot of detail. Okay, this is a little much. Maybe bring it back. Now be careful with the shadow slider because you can really go too far and make a photograph look over processed very, very quickly with this shadow slider. This is the culprit. Okay, we're going to come back to these, but now we're going to jump into an area that maybe you don't visit very often. And I would highly recommend this when you're working with skies. What we're going to do is we're going to scroll down here and we're going to go to the HSL color. And you'll see this in a tab inside of Photoshop's camera raw. So the area we really want to be concentrating on is the sky. And now to bring out the blue in the sky, you might think the saturation is the best way to go, but it's actually not. Let's go under luminance, because what we want to do is actually just darken it. And rather than haphazardly push, you know, the green and the aqua blue sliders trying to possibly mostly blue, but trying to get back the color, we can just grab this little pin here. And that means we click, we can drag down and that brings in some saturation. Make sure you do it also very close to your object because that's going to help you to avoid too much in the area of this fringing, even though there's a little bit going on. It's probably a little much. Let's just brighten up just a tad. And of course, you could go into the saturation if you wanted and you could give it just a little boost. We probably don't need it in this photo. OK, so notice we've got this weird edge. Let's have a look at that right now. What we're going to do is we're just going to just scroll back to the top here. And I'm just going to click on the crop tool a couple of times. And all that does is just bring me back my magnifying. And let's use this magnifier and click in and see what's happening. Sometimes when you do this, you're going to see chromatic aberration, which is what we see with this color fringing. See, we've got this kind of greeny color over here. We've got this kind of reddy pink color over here. And that happens because of the, the lens and the different wavelengths. Each color of light, the RGB, the red, green, and blue, or travel at different wavelengths. And sometimes you can get this on the edge of the lens. Very easy to fix. Let's have a look at that right now. We're just gonna go down, all the way down to lens correction. And all we need to do here is just choose remove chromatic aberration and look at that, boom, fix it right away. Now you could also enable the profile corrections if you wanted. You could go in here and enable those. And see how that kind of looks. Is that helping the image? Let's have a look at it. Before, after. It's helping a little bit, but what it is doing is it's giving us a light vignette around the edges. So what we want to do is just go under the vignette here and let's slide it back to just kind of adjust for that. 
And when I say vignette, watch how it's lighter at the edges here than it is in the middle of the photo. Sometimes it's darker on the edges than it is in the base color here. See that? Light, very light. So by bringing that vignette down, we can even that out and get a much better finish. Great. Let's go back to our other adjustments now that we've kind of got rid of the, the main culprits here. So we've kind of brought back our detail. So if we hit the backslash key, this is where we started. And this is where we are now. So we've just kind of corrected the photo. Let's do a little bit more work to give it a little color, a little flavor. So maybe other color temperature here. We might want to go under a profile. If you're not in RAW, you're not going to see these options. And some cameras, such as a DJI, have a built-in profile. So you won't see these options in there either. So let's have a look and see if any of these look better. There's our Adobe color, Adobe standard. Hmm, not bad. So we're looking under these raw. And then of course we've got the camera matching here where we can actually look at the ones that came from the camera manufacturer. And in this case, I see it's a CR2. So this is a Canon from a 5D Mark IV. And I'm looking, this is kind of boosting it just a little too much. I'm thinking this faithful or the standard are a good place to start. I'm going to go faithful because what it's doing is it's lowering the contrast, giving me a smoother, flatter photo, which means that I can add the punch in post myself. So I'm just going to close that now. And now what we're going to do here is let's play around with the colors. If we maybe want to warm it up just a little bit. I think that looks quite pleasant. Now notice it's kind of lacking. It's got detail now, but it's lacking punch. It's lacking contrast. And we could do that by pushing the contrast slider all the way up. Well, not all the way up, but pushing it up a little bit. But the thing about this with the contrast, when you move this contrast, look at what happens on the histogram, blacks and whites. So when we push the contrast, so when we push that contrast, what it does is it takes the tones and it kind of pushes out the histogram. What does that mean? Well, what it means is it's making the blacks darker and it's making the highlights lighter, as you can see with that histogram. Low contrast means everything's in the middle of the histogram and it's empty on the sides, pushing it out. It's pushing things more into the blacks and whites. Well, this is what we want to do. But the thing is, when we move the contrast slider, we are evenly applying that contrast to the shadows and highlights. And in this case, we may not want to put as much contrast into those highlights as we are into the shadows. So the way we do that, if we look down here and you see whites and blacks, that's what these sliders are. Shadows and highlights are recovery sliders. Whites and blacks are where we push the contrast into those whites or blacks. Okay, so we can see up here, we've got a little gap there. We've got some room to go in the highlights, a little bit in the shadows, not too much. Here's a tip. If we start with the blacks and just kind of slide it over till we see something we like, you can kind of see, hey, that's looking pretty good. You'll notice up here, this little yellow area is going to start to appear. Watch this. See up there? That means it's starting to clip. If you want to see where it's clipping on the image, hold down the Alt key and slide, and then you're going to see where it's starting to clip. And that's in these regions here. Well, what does clipping mean? Clipping means it's just being forced to pure black where it's losing detail. And in this situation, it's okay to lose a detail here because there's no important detail. And that gives the image a little bit of body. Same thing applies for the whites. If we pull this up and I hold down the Alt or the Option key, we can see where it's starting to clip, which obviously is around the edge of the plane first. But I don't want to lose it too much in that star there. So why don't we take it to about there and release and see what it looks like. And you know what? That looks quite nice. So if we're looking at what we've done, there's the before and there's the after image. Now, if you're looking for an image that's maybe a little bit more natural, or a little bit more faithful, you could pretty much stop here, maybe just apply a little bit of sharpening. But we're going to go a little bit further and start to work with some of the texture inside of the image. So if we go down here, you'll notice there's three sliders under presence, texture, clarity, dehaze. I like to just call these texture sliders because what they do is they're boosting the texture. So how do these work differently? Well, dehaze, if we look at this here, what it does is it really cuts through any glare. And in fact, there is a little bit of glare there because of that midday sun. So why don't we just cut through that a little bit? It tends to add a little bit more body to the shadows. So sometimes when you apply this, you may want to go up to the blacks and roll it off a little bit. If I hold down the Alt option, you can see it's a little bit more clipping. Let's pull it back just a tad. 
And see how we've still got that nice body there without pushing it all the way out. Now, clarity increases the mid-tone contrast. You've seen this a lot. You know, we push it here, you get that kind of faux HDR kind of look when the image looks kind of crunchy. A lot of people like to use this. To be honest, I'm not a huge fan of clarity um, just because it tends to make things look like it was drawn from marker. It makes fine detail just kind of go away. But what they've added is the texture slider. The texture gives me what I liked in the clarity without ruining the edges. What it does is it adds a little more texture to the surfaces. So let's increase that texture a little bit. And that's really working nicely for me. Now, if you want to really make it look faux HDR, push the clarity all the way up, and turn the texture all the way up. No one's stopping you. All right. The next thing we want to do is just touch on the vibrance. Vibrance is like saturation. Saturation is how much color do you want in the image? Push the saturation up very, very high, and it becomes a very oversaturated image. Let me demonstrate. And, uh, you know, it's not really appealing. I mean, obviously, you're not going to push it all the way up like that. But you could tweak it a little bit. And in this case, it probably look quite nice if I give it just a little push. It's going to put that into the reds. We don't really need the saturation in the skies. We can revisit that at the end, of course. Uh, but the other option here, let me reset that by double-clicking on it. The other option is Vibrance. Vibrance works just like saturation, but it's more intelligent. So what it does is it looks at the areas that don't have too much saturation and it adds more saturation into them. For example, look at the reflection here on the back part of the engine there. Watch this. See how much color gets added there? You know, compare that to the reds here. We're definitely adding more reds, but not as much. So what it does is it boosts the saturation in the areas that doesn't have so much saturation. And that way it avoids clipping or blowing out the colors. So 90% or 99% even of the time, I'm going to be using the vibrant slider rather than the saturation. There are times when the saturation works better. Just experiment and see what works for yourself. So let's have a look at the before and the after. And you can see there's a massive difference there just by intelligently moving a few sliders. So anyway, I'm curious if there's any new tips or anything you picked up in this tutorial. Let me know in the comments underneath. Is this useful? I mentioned that every now and then I'm going to start dropping some of these, uh, you know, real world where we walk through a photograph. You know, other times we're going to be focusing on certain tools or certain techniques in these series. But right now I want, felt it was a good time to do one of those. Let's just bring it all together, bring it home kind of tutorials. And if you like Photoshop and Lightroom tutorials, consider hitting that subscribe button right now, become part of the cafe crew, turn on notifications, become part of the notification squad. What does that mean? It just means you won't miss a tutorial. You get that notification, lets you know when I upload a new one, which is usually about once a week. So anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust, tell all your friends about Photoshop cafe, and you know what I'm going to say next. <laughs> Until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.